This is Aquarius, the world's only operating undersea laboratory. Scientists can live down here for up to two weeks, giving them as much time underwater as a year's worth of regular diving. Living down here day and night means getting to know the reef intimately. I'm Mark Schroep, and I'm heading out from Key Largo in Florida to dive to the lab. I could be one of the last visitors because, with budget struggles ahead, the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, which owns the lab, is recommending that Congress cut its funding. I'm going to meet the researchers who think Aquarius is worth saving. Here I go. The lab is 17 meters below the surface, and it's been in operation here since 1992. There it is. Inside, I'm going to meet marine scientist Mark Patterson, who's been working out of Aquarius for years, and ocean advocate Sylvia Earle. In 1970, Sylvia was one of the first scientists to live underwater. Sylvia, can you tell us a little bit about what your first undersea lab experience was like? Yes, the gift of time was the most striking thing, and we're seeing it again here, where you know, short dips in and out are very useful. But to be able to just come and stay, there's a qualitative as well as a quantitative difference. You become a resident, not a visitor. You're here day and night. You get to see the same fish over and over. You get to know their faces. You get to know their habits. And I don't mean, oh, there's an angelfish out there. I mean, there's that angelfish that is always there. But they're usually in pairs. That level of intimacy means researchers here can notice things about the reef they might otherwise miss. Because they are living underwater, they can spend 10 or 12 hours diving a day without worrying about decompression sickness. Over the years, they've studied how sponges filter water, how ocean acidification is affecting reefs, and why reefs are in such poor shape. It's going to sound kind of nerdy, but I actually recognize the individual colonies out there because I've done physiological experiments on that individual in the past, and I know, okay, well, this one's adapted to light in this way and responds physiologically to water motion in this way. Uh, I got funded by National Science Foundation just recently to test a model of how corals respond to stress. and. Part of those experiments were going to take place here at Conk Reef. Now most of them are going to have to take place in the lab, which is a big shame. Lab experiments are valuable, but they can't come close to replicating the complexity of real ocean ecosystems. In the last century, we've invested far more in looking up at space than down at our underwater world. Sylvia says that now, more than ever, we need to understand our oceans. We've neglected the ocean and it's costing us dearly now that we know that the ocean provides climate and weather. It shapes the way the whole world works. It's where most of the water is. It's where most of the light is. We've been looking the other way, and the time is really upon us to recognize that we don't have a lot of time. Aquarius is an amazing place. As I head back to the surface, I wonder what science will lose if this facility closes. Sylvia, Mark, and many others are trying to find a way to restore funding for Aquarius. But if that doesn't happen, it could be decommissioned as early as December this year. For Nature Video, I'm Mark Schroep.